When he finally became Catholicos in August 1166, Nersa Shnorali had just suffered the worst loss of his life, and his best work, everything that we remember him for, was already behind him. Becoming Catholicos was, in a way, the postscript to Nerses's illustrious life as theologian, scholar, liturgist, canonist, administrator, mediator, and composer of luminous, multivalent hymns and profoundly exegetical epic poetry. Becoming head of the church may have felt like a bittersweet obligation laid upon him by his family's destiny as lineal descendants of St. Gregory the Illuminator. His seven-year reign was marred by opposition to himself and to his family's almost mythic aura of Catholicos authority. At the same time, it brought him great opportunities to forge fraternal ties with other Christian jurisdictions on the shrinking island of Christian Cilicia, barely afloat in a sea of Islamic faith, culture, and conquest. Nerses had been a priest for half a century before his elevation. Most of that time he spent as the right-hand man of his older brother, Catholicos Gregory III Pahlavuni. The brothers' love for each other was deep and enduring. They had been one another's closest companion since childhood. After their father's tragic death defending their fortress and the surrounding area, the family's fortunes changed dramatically as their widowed mother and her children had to leave their home. Gregory, six or seven years older than Nerses and a student in school at the time, effectively raised his brilliant little brother. He must have rejoiced when Nerses graduated with the title Shnorali, full of grace awarded to their school's most accomplished students. As Nerses later said, Gregory was my brother in the flesh, but my father in the spirit. When Nerses nearly died in early middle age, his brother was there for him. Years after, Nerses would bitterly regret that as Gregory sank into his final illness, he was not there for his brother. Instead, Nerses, who rarely traveled, was away at Lambron in coastal Cilicia, mediating a family feud and hobnobbing with high Byzantine authorities nearby. Upon his return to the Catholicosal residence in Horomkla, Nerses was appalled to find that Gregory had not told him. He was nearing death. On April 19, 1166, a Palm Sunday, Nerses reluctantly allowed Gregory to consecrate him coadjutor Catholicos in order to avoid a chaotic transition of power. in the wake of his brother's death less than four months later. The grief-stricken Nerses penned an encyclical letter to Armenian hierarchs and churches everywhere. In it, he laid out his deep concern that Armenian communities were not only physically dispersed, but internally divided as well. He addressed his pastoral words to Armenian Christians in all walks of life, ranking them in order of the damage that their short-sightedness or low standards of faith and behavior could cause to Armenian society as a whole. He began with himself, of course, and then moved on to monks, whose prayers were crucial to the world and whose preoccupation with things other than prayer caused harm to the entire body of Christ. Next in line came bishops, then priests, secular leaders, the military, business people, craftsmen, and so on. Last of all, Nerses addressed himself to women whose influence in the world he seems to have regarded as needing little correction. Apart from this pastoral letter, 
Most of what Nerses wrote in his Catholicosal years was ecumenical in nature. His correspondence with the Byzantine Emperor Manuel Komnenos is an uncompromising defense of the Armenian faith's worth and integrity. However, Nerses did not exclude the possibility of implementing those changes in religious practice that will inevitably emerge where there is fraternal love and admiration. In fact, he said, ecumenical dialogue is only successful between equals. As he told the emperor, if God wills that we converse with one another, it should not be like a master with his servants, such that you will set our shortcomings before us. Yet we will not dare to tell you what shocks us in you. It is easy to see why we view Nerses as a great saint, but many in his time disagreed. One very vocal detractor accused him of being a modern-day Pontius Pilate and said that under Nerses' regime, the Catholicosate was working against God and all the saints. While Nerses did not hesitate to correct his correspondent, he also said, I'm not very disturbed by the accusations your letter expresses because they are nothing by comparison with my real sins obvious and hidden. If our faults are going to be laid bare before God and his angels, by whom we will be judged and accurately rebuked, they should also be exposed to our fellow humans. False accusations give us an opportunity to examine ourselves and to change our ways accordingly. Nerses's writing, administrative policy and ecumenism were all fueled by the same spirit of humility and by his compassionate and sensitive respect for others. His Catholicosate offered charitable assistance to people directly, face to face, on a regular basis. But even beyond that, Nerses deputated his disciples to search out persons who might be in need, yet out of embarrassment would not come forward, and to help those people anonymously and quietly. Many of Nerses' voluminous writings deserve to be better known. His elegant commentary on Matthew's Gospel, for example, a gift he was in process of composing for his brother when Gregory died. It remained unfinished, but was later completed by others. His epic exegetical works, written for scholarly peers, remain above the comprehension of most modern readers, but his hymns and his famous prayer, I Confess with Faith, are much loved and his contributions to the daily liturgies of the hours, the Jamer Kutyums, speak to the heart even of people who do not know Armenian. All of his writings subtly showcase the biblical and liturgical erudition second to none, and at the same time, they embody the warmth of his humility, his love for God and for others, and his unshakable confidence in God's benevolent will. Centuries of faithful Armenians who have aspired to live by Nerses' inspiring example, would affirm with his biographer, blessed is the people, and even more so the time period that has such a patriarch, an inerrant and encouraging leader of souls, and the light and glory of their church.